Hello, my name is Richard Miller, and welcome to Never Not Here. Today we've got a very special show. We're in Pune, India, and we're actually at the Indira College, which is a college with, I think, eight or nine uh, separate uh, fields of study. And we're with Prachi, who is the executive director of this whole college. And uh, thanks so much for your time and uh, for inviting us to share uh, your passion about educating. Uh, the, the young people of India. You were telling me something that was amazing, I think, that uh, just uh, a few short years ago, there was 30 students. What was that in, uh, in uh, 1994? Oh, yes. Uh, Richard, thanks a lot for coming over here to Indira Institute of Management. I'm the executive director for the Indira Group of Institute. And as you just recalled me, and just I'm in the back to the memory lane, and when we started in 1994, we just had a batch of 60 students. To begin with our first PG program, that is, which is called as MBA, Masters in the Business Administration. We started in 1994 with 60 students. Today, with 14 institutes, we are having 9,000 plus students on the campus. We have almost all, I say that the 100 acres of land with the Indira Group of Institute. When we started initially with the building, which is the leased one on the rental basis, and I think that it talks about the progress of the Indira as well as the progress of the India too. Because at the Indian level, at the Indian context, the way in which the education is progressing, the need of the, and the recognition which is there, and the students when they are feeling from all the corners of the country that yes, I have to be educated, I have to have my PG, I have to have my UG, that too in different disciplines. It talks about the intake of the students. Having yeah. Worldwide, you know, uh, we know India is a big country, we know there's a lot of poor people and we know there's a certain amount of rich people. But I've been here 10 weeks and the things I've seen, I mean, I'd never known that India was so uh, such a throbbing economy and so powerful and so many things going on. Oh, I think that it's not about the rich people and the poor people of this country. It's all about the country's inclination towards education. And so Indian government giving a lot of, what I will say, the scholarships, giving a lot of fee concessions, announcing the lot of the bailout packages for the students so that they can complete their education. And it has started giving a, a, the revolution in the Indian context. At all the levels of all the institutes, not only our own institute, but any institute in Maharashtra, in India, it has to have a 33% reservation, which talks about that giving the justice to all of them, those basically, those who are also economically backward. What and did you say now? You said 30% reservation. 33% reservation, they come from a different caste. But this reservation basically was on the basis of that those who, those whose generations, they were not educated before, they have to be given a fair chance to be there in the education stream. And that's the philosophy. And today you will find that most of them, they are into the education stream and they are just completing their education. And I believe that education, it means I can quote example of my own vice chancellor of this University of Pune. Our Dr. Narendra Zadar, who belongs from a very, very, uh, the poorest of the poor family, okay, today he is the Vice Chancellor of this university, completed his the PhD from the uh, uh, Indiana University. He has been honored, he has written, he is the, also the director of RBI, and he is a very intellectual person. So it's about the inclination, it's about the ability, it's about the insight. It's about that having a driving force to be educated. This program <laughs> works because you also have a preparatory school, right? I mean, you take you can take children right from the age of, of uh, early school and bring them right yes. and prepare them for college. Yes, we Whereas have in been... other countries where the preparatory school is separate, uh, people are dropped off and they're not prepared for college, and it's very difficult not to necessarily that all the all the colleges they have the PG to uh, PG and the KG simultaneously. As we at Indira, we have our Indira National School, but we started the National School recently. And firstly, we started the entire programs with the PG. So we have worked the reverse way. The normally it's from KG to PG. In Indira, we have worked it from PG to KG. 
So there so are. KG is like uh, down to kindergarten, and yes, PG is the post graduation program. Post graduation. Now program. we have the post graduation programs in MBA. We have MCA. We have MCM. So, so those are, are computer schools, right? And management. I'm and not so sure everybody knows the letters, so yeah. that I want to make sure that everyone knows. But MBA, we all know. But MCA is a computer. MCA is Masters in the Computer Applications. Right. And MCM then, is the Masters in the Computer Management. Right. There is one more course which is called as MPM. That is Masters in Post the ma Masters in the Personal Management. There is Masters in the Marketing Management. That wow. is also the MMM. Yeah. Then we have the MBA, which is the autonomous, and we have the separate electives for the MBAs. Like we have the finance department, we have the HR department, we have the marketing department, we have systems, we have IB, international business. Now up before from this year, we will have retail, and so we are giving a lot of electives to the students. And I think that a school like Indira, which has been re-accredited. By this system, which is called as NBA, which is the National Board of Accreditation, which is attached with the AICT, which is attached with the the All India Council of Technical Education, and they give the accreditation to the institutes. So ours is the only institute which has been re-accredited for our programs. So this re-accreditation talks about the quality of education. My all the programs of MBA, MCA, they have been accredited. And I think that it talks about the systems. It talks about the process. It talks about the deliverable. It talks about the quality of the student. And we at Indira, we believe that yes, we have to deliver the quality education. But the entire philosophy which we underline that we have to hire the students where first they should be good human beings. That's what. That's, that's the foundation. That's so that's important. That's the foundation. But in Because India, that's I believe like a... that if I'm not a good When I will be good a good administrator, being. good director. When I am a good human being, so I have to be good wife. I have to be good daughter. I have to be good sister. I have to be good whatever relations which we cater for. And in India, we believe in all these systems. We think that the professional life and the personal life you cannot have the the, the uh, there is a very thin line. What you behave in your personal life necessarily it gets reflected because that's your inner. That's your What you? That's your strength, maybe your weaknesses. But it talks about the person. It talks about your personal qualities, characteristics, and so you have to be. You have to be a good human being so that you can be a good teacher, so that you can be a good director. So <laughs> India is, you know, like well known, famous in in, in yeah. all over the world, just for how tolerant people are, and for uh, how loving people are. And I think that really besides the tolerance, what you call is tolerance. I call it that. The Indian people, they have the multitasking skills, and the entire world might be looking at this tolerance because many of them they lack this multi-skilling. Like I can read and I can sing too, or I can read simultaneously. I can uh, listen to my radio also, and I enjoy and I go on with lyrics of somebody, and still I am reading some paper, or I may be cooking. And simultaneously, I might be answering to Purna that okay, on fourteenth we have this particular function. How do we go about it? So this multitasking, because then the lots of activities are they are coupled together. I think that most of the people they don't have that the patience to proactively present or to deal with that. So I think that we have been trained for it. Our the entire nurturing of the most of the Indians. Goes with this multitasking, and so most probably we have the tolerance along with the talent. <laughs> Do most of your students come from the Pune area or yes. from uh, Maharashtra? Not or? only from Pune and Maharashtra; they come from all over the country. Even come from the other countries also. So you we have, have a, been, a yes, certain amount of international the, students. Uh, we have the students. We have also got a sanction from the AICT for accepting the people from the people from the Indian origin and uh, even the NRIs. We have a special quota which is sanctioned by the government, and as we have fulfilled all the conditions of the quality education, we also got that quota for all of our courses at PG and UG. So we have students from different countries also, not only from the Pune and around or Maharashtra and around. Because India is a real melting pot, you know. There's so many different races and so many different yes. religions and then uh, cultural backgrounds in India. Yes. So then. That's where the the real humanity takes hold. You know, you yes. can you're really tested 
it's so easy for a small nation that's very homogenous to act and to uh, operate uh, smoothly. Yeah. But for a melting pot nation, uh, it really takes a big heart. I think that there is a challenge with the heterogeneity of the students also. The heterogeneity as far as their race, caste, creed, language, which is the which means we have accepted it because we know that we are having we are going to have the students coming from the different parts of the country. But what we try to tune their learning curve, there we are expecting the homogeneity as the students' community. That are they getting if all of them if they are getting the concept of the HRM, I think that our task is easy. The another task that now most of them, now the Pune, Bombay, you will find that it's a cosmopolitan cities. And so already they know that somebody to the next door, maybe Gujarati, somebody there, maybe talking Tamil, somebody there, maybe talking Kannada, but still they have the some language with what they communicate. It can be English, it can be Hindi, it can be any other language. You go to Bombay and you will find that most of them, they are conversant with Gujarati. Because Bombay being the country where most of the trade and commerce takes place. So this homogeneity as far as in their learning curve, that's the challenge in front of us. And I do agree that it's very difficult to cater this homogeneity. Basically, I believe that this to create this brand, to create this Indira's brand or for any institute, I believe that you need to have love and affection for the student. You need to know that what are the exact demand and need by the industry by the country at this point uh, or at this particular era. Now the entire globalization is there, the recession is also there. And when we talk about the globalization, it never becomes only the local context or it's just not making them employable for the industry which are Pune and around. It's making them employable at the global level. And all 100% students, they cannot be placed at that. So one has to also have realization that though we are giving a common syllabus, common content, the students, they may cater the different needs. Some of them, they may cater global need. Some of them, they may cater the local need. That is the global plus the local. So the needs keeps different. It means they vary from industry to industry. And we have all set of students. Somebody who may be very talented. Somebody who may not be very talented, but he is sincere enough, he is honest enough. And each job description, you require the people with a different set of qualities. And so we appeal the students that look that from whatever is your USP, try to see that what's my USP, how I can present myself, how I can just make the use of my qualities to its optimum. And that's what we appeal along with taking or delivering the syllabus. I know you do a certain amount of research here. And I was wondering, like, uh, research also... Uh, helps with developing the syllabus yes. so that you understand what's what's going to be needed, what's the future. Yes. And uh, do you have uh, research programs that are actually in conjunction with industry or does industry give you uh, uh, projects to work on? Projects to have, work on? Yes, we have the two kinds of research activities which are happening in Indira. We have the Indira Research and Developmental Center where we are accepting the research consultancies and the programs of the industry, which are offered by the industry. This year, we have completed the research programs and the prestigious one are, the we have got the MEDC and we are in the formulating of the policies of the entire SAIS, SAIS, SCZ, which is the most talked issue in the entire world about, where the capturing of the land and setting with the, giving the compensation to the farmers, having the land where nothing can be produced, it can be converted for the industry pattern, which is called as a sales. And this is the issue. So we are the one we, we, where we have developed the entire policy for the MEDC, for the government level. We have conducted that research. Our institute is the first one to formulate even the formation of a companies with the farmers. That is the great achievement that we have been able to give them the guidance not only to bring them together, but even to form the companies of the farmers themselves. So just to explain this a little more, this is about uh, reclaiming farmland and putting it into the industrial yes. base. And so then with just there compensation are a lot of policies, for the for the, for are the farms. Offer, but, but how do we go about it? How the compensation should be calculated? How the farmers, their rehabilitation should be done? 
what kind of policies do they have, do they have a chance to have some uh, interest in the in the land like would they have any kind of lease income that would see, come to them see, in the, over the them, years most of them they don't think for the long sighted they don't think most of them they are happy to get the lump sum compensation at that point of time but then i think that here we are training them here we are updating them that look this is what you are getting out of this you have to reserve and you have to see that how you can utilize it so we have also proposed that 50% of the proceedings should be in the name of the lady of the, uh, the of that house because she is the one who takes care for the education for the further future and that's how we are also giving them this financial planning so training awareness convincing so that kind of assignments we keep getting we are the one where we have trained even to the bombay municipal corporation and the training right from from the pun level up to the officers level all kinds of such projects garware wall ropes we have completed the assignments we have done few projects with the child labor project and all these are the assignments which are done by the indira research development maybe you can explain a little bit about yeah. uh, how uh, people live in india because the extended family is very popular so then it what that means more or less is like uh, several apartments on one floor of a building might be for the in-laws for the parents for the brothers and sisters and extended family would be this large living unit where if there was some money coming in uh it would be thought to get make sure that everyone got to school that everyone got their education that all part pieces parts of the family were taken care of and and so i think there is a force in india especially that uh, nobody's going to grab the money and uh, just spend it all and no they will not spend all but most of them then they need that we need to explain them we need to make them aware of it that is the fact the importance of the education importance of saving i think that we have to reinforce though it is there as a family system it exists but reinforcement of this input i think that it is required all time and not necessarily now you will have all kinds of the extended families living together so you may get somewhere some of them they may be living with extended families some of them most of them they are the nuclear families now and the farmers the way in which they have their houses it's not the apartments it's not that these are the typical houses which they construct around that farm uh, or around uh, maybe the nearer to the farm or the land and that's the typical houses which they have so or definitely they are going to retain with those houses in, sp- in spite of uh, going for the selling of the land for the sales let me ask about more about partnership with industry because yeah. i wonder if there's like internship programs where students work some one semester back in into the industry and then they come back and finish their school and uh, it does I, i will tell you i was just about to tell you another aspect of our research that we also have the formal program which is called as the phd visa so we have a center where we are also enrolling the students for the phd and we have the guides those who are giving the guidance to the phd students so that's how we work for the research as such the question which you are asking is all about the students and their partnership with the industry institute academia partner we del- we deliver it at two level the first that all of them they have to take up the summer projects which is mandatory as per our syllabus which is mandatory as per our university rules regulation so whether it's any pg program they have to do the summer internship with the industry so that's where they actually go and work with the industry in case of the it programs they work for a longer duration that is for 6 months is that like on their third year or yes, is it yes it is a part of it which will be evaluated it is it will be even it is it gets uh, accounted into their the entire mark list and they are getting the grades for the project and for the mba it's of 45 days besides that there are many other assignments which keep coming to the uh, to indira research center so we utilize the student force for doing the market research we utilize the student force for getting maybe somebody has given us the project that okay whether we should open the branch of this particular retail shop in this area on or maybe some other local specific area yes. then we give such kind of research projects even to the students so it's become the fields uh, research for them right now we are doing a project which is, which talks about the making the people aware or the uh, now still it is in a very infantry uh, stage but the projects where we are the where the, the association wants to make the people aware about the public transport system 
so students they are collecting data and very soon they will be developing something based on that which will be getting published on the cementing wikipedia so like that the live projects keeps coming to the students but for the in, uh, the institute and the industry partnership besides the project uh, we uh, we get getting great speakers to the uh, the school uh, we have the partnership programs such as uh, maybe with the imc maybe with the that is the indian merchant chamber chamber we have a partnership for this with the stanson consultancy we have like that we have many academic partners which helps us to get the good speakers and we even ourselves we keep inviting the people to this campus the 15 days back we had the entire series which was named as the setu the bridge setu is bridge so we call that this is the bridge in between the academia and the institute and we we had the different speakers talking of the different sector all the public sector all private sector maybe we talked about infrastructure banking and finance we talk about pharmacy we talk about the retail sector we talk about the global environment sustainability issue we talked about the recession and i think that the students they get good insight while listening to these speakers at least they become aware of that okay what is happening in the industry what industry expects from us and the third element to have the good rapport with the industry we keep updating students about that okay look these skills are required in years to come like now all my students they have already studied tally they will be completing the erp package training they will be completing the like hrn students in years to come in the field of the psychology to have the clinical psychology knowledge in spite of having the mba hr system or to have the nlp training it's become obviously important for the industry so this year we have completed the training of nlp officially certified by the american uh, the institute and all the students they have completed that particular course say so nrp so we will make sure we know what all the uh, abbreviations are okay uh, uh, let me just remind it once because i am not able to get the full form of the nlp at this yes. uh, particular moment but i will give you the full form of course okay yeah neuro linguistic program okay it's, it's neuro linguistic program right it talks about all refining and redefining the personality its strength it talks about the 16 pf system where the characteristics and the attributes can be really stressed out and which is very useful for any hr department uh fantastic okay. that actually uh, the uh working with your colleagues is just as important as knowing your field of of work and building a team like in structure. the finance now if they don't know the derivatives if they don't have any knowledge about the sensex and the, what is happening actually at with the stock exchange i think that they are not accepted by the industry at all so right. we have a program which is coupled with the finance student where we have we have asked them that they have to undergo with the training of the bombay stock exchange program which we have given as an add on which is a complementary to our own syllabus so we keep doing the industry institute interaction at this three particular level one is the giving them the live project giving them the summers getting the people from the industry and third giving them the add on inputs which is the requirement and need of the industry so that we can really deliver what the industry wants and i think that indira has made its imprint in the field of the industry industrialists they know the students of from indira and i think that indira students as i said that uh, there is a trend in the young people in this generation to keep on hopping the jobs but you will find that most of the indira students they prefer to have the the steady experience with some organization which gives them really it it, it is very beneficial for them to carve their the real strong career, base, strong, strong, base. strong base because if in every 3 months if they keep hopping just for additional few more rupees i think that they will never get any experience any enrichment no association no learning no passion so this is what we are training them we are training them that accept the way in which the life comes to you and the doctor ian that if and it is true no that every time you can't get the things which you love then we ask them that they love the things which you get which is that the spiritual base i think that right. which we need India to has, give it to actually, them india yes. has you know <laughs> it's just developing has. on your yes. strengths and i think that this is the unique feature of being the indian institute being the uh, indira as the 
a very well known institute which is the uh, which is based in India. I I attended two classes. You yeah. know, they were really fabulous, and of course. The two classes I were attended were both in English. So then, to me, it seems like you really have a strong focus on international activity because are, are uh, most teachers' uh, classes taught in English or are they also taught in they Hindi, are, several they are languages? They perfectly taught only in English. Oh, the whole college runs in English? The whole college runs in English. <laughs> How about that? It is, it's not in Hindi, it's not in Marathi, it's only about the English. So we have accepted the universal language as English. The universal business language, <laughs> yes. right? No, and then of course, as I say, that they need to cater with the original languages because never before the Nokia used to have the customer support in the regional languages. But the more customers the Nokia started getting into India to expand their business, now it's mandatory for them to reply for their customers inquiries even in Hindi and Marathi. So you yes, need to have the, the fluency over the regional languages too, but one has to accept that the language of the business and the industry is English. Let me ask you about your growth because you probably need, I mean, to go from 60 to uh, 9,000, it means yeah. you've got a lot of professors, right? And yes. the professors you're looking every year for new ones. So how do you find it? Uh, where do you find all these uh, teachers? And do you have a teaching uh, as part of your curriculum in teaching? I think that basically teachers, the teacherhood is something which you have to nurture. You get the qualified teachers, but you don't get the teachers with that teacherhood as an as their attitude. Like a parenthood, I myself I believe that there is a concept which should be called as a teacherhood. One has to be a good teacher means he requires to have not only the technical knowledge or the command over the subject, but he should also enjoy taking classes, talking to the students, giving them the uh, raising more and more queries. He should be happy to interact with the students at that level. We get the teachers, those who are qualified. There are certain norms for recruiting teachers in India at PG level, at UG level, which is mandatory and we don't do any compromises on that. All the time we are looking for all the experienced teachers, the teachers, those who can come from industry, we welcome them. But even the fresher, somebody who comes and join Indira, I think that the first job of Indira is to convert the teacher, giving them some inputs about the teacherhood. So in Indira, we have constantly, once, uh, twice in a year, we have the faculty development program. See, the more number of the teachers, the more responsibility lies with the management that what kind of teacher's quality you are into, how you are nurturing, how you are strengthening their quality, what kind of updates are also done by the teachers. So updates mean yes. that they get to take like, some time off like and, and IT, go back and study some uh, extra yes, courses? Yes, they, they have to and we give them the substantial uh, hours so that they can also prepare in the college for their lectures. We provide them a lot of library facilities, a lot of online database and they have to do this preparation. So professor here will not get, is not bombarded with all kinds of the classes. We have ample of teachers so that they get the adequate time. I think that in Indira, we are the first one to display our planners entirely on the web intrapage. My all teachers, they have to display their planners on the web intrapage. And students, they have access right from day one for the planner of the teachers. So this accountability and transparency, which we have now forced in, I think that it requires a lot of pre-preparation. Unless you are not ready to face the queries of the students, you can't dare to display your planners on the web or your planners on the intra web page. But I think that after so many years of Indira, we have achieved that now we, we feel comfortable that yes, students, they should know that this is the case study which I will be taking. This is the research paper which I am going to take it to the class. This is the film which I am going to share with them. This is something which is called as that each teacher I have asked them that you have to have one interdisciplinary kind approach. You take any, you select any topic, but not necessarily you will have to have the lessons only based off your subject. See that how the economics goes very well with finance. See that how the finance, it has all the applications which are related with IT. See that how the banking transactions, somebody from HR, what are, where the HR issues in the banking, like that interdisciplinary models, now this is also the need of the hour. And so even we have compelled them to have 
this this particular exercise we called it as jara hatke it means thing which is not there the thing something different than think differently so this model is also there so like that i think that we need to nurture the teachers so they say think. like think out of the box you know yes, like out of your out own of the box. out yes. of your own context yes you know? that is that is what we call it as jara hatke model yes so this is what we are doing in indira and see it is whenever you get we have been grown in one year from 60 to 9000 gradually we have it means developed we have added the another courses we have added the pg then we have added the ug then the teachers they were also recruited accordingly each institute has together i think that now i must be having for my all affiliated uh, courses more than 250 full time teachers with this institute i must be having more than 1 lakh books in all our libraries i must be having around some 500 non teaching staff supporting staff working for it so it is as good as any university and i can say about this teacher board because when i joined in 2000 we had only eight teachers and each and every program which we have added i am instrumental and i have done the fantastic yeah. <laughs> everything in that progress so any teacher who has been appointed i know that the way in which we interviewed him the way in which we have nurtured and so we have the hierarchy where we keep doing all these things so and my chairperson i must appreciate my chairperson my group director see they have given so much freedom so much freedom that we feel that okay let us do something for this institute of ours of course there no freedom comes without any responsibility but i think that then you start enjoying with your responsibility and she takes all the care that okay because it's all about the finance it's all about putting money it's all about uh, the uh, catering the need it's all about it means making one building means how many crores plan you have to have so i think that if the management has accepted that we will not compromise with quality that's the attitude of our management that's the basic fundamentals of our management and so we must appreciate my chairperson my group director our chairperson is tarita mahendra uh, sarita ma tarita tarita sarita mahendri sorita t t a oh yeah sarita tarita mahendra yes and i think that she is the woman entrepreneur she is she is a very well known woman entrepreneur she is she is the lady of courage she doesn't only dream but she executes her dream and she looks dream in the day time so that she has to accomplish <laughs> the dreams but she is very courageous she is very dynamic she is very open she is absolutely it means uh, she is friendly and at the same time she is a task master she will she will get the things accomplished the way in which she has expected to be but she knows that we have to move towards the international standard all these things today whatever indira is doing i think that it's a vision of that lady who is not only the woman entrepreneur but she has studied well about the philosophy of the life she knows about that what kind of students we need to carve and i think that we work in a team and we really enjoy in indira <laughs> with 250 uh, professors what would be the average class size i mean i know there's some classes that are introductory classes some that are normal we have on an average a class of 60 60. In India, we have the average class of sixty. Right. Like uh, we don't have the classes of ten, fifteen, twenty-five. It will be a luxury for India. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us let us hope that yeah. we may have a class of ten and fifteen. Maybe in advanced research in the PhD have, department. For the right? PhDs, we have very less numbers. The no guide can accept more than eight students under the for the guidance. so there is a certain limit for the phd guides to accept their students for the phd ship maybe for the upcoming the more of the niche area programs we may have the lesser students but we have the less students for the specialization programs we have less students for some selected add on program there we have started having the limited number or the limited edition there we have started right, right. <laughs> Do you have partnerships with other universities or international universities? I mean, do you have uh, exchange programs where students come here uh, or where your students only, go out? We have only with our autonomous program, but we don't have any partnership 
right now because it is not allowed as per the AICT norms. So we may think about it. So that has to do with the India. It's not allowed for with by the government. No, no, it's uh, no, it's not allowed. What's the AICT norms? No, uh, the AICT norms tells us that we have to undergo the sequence of permission, and that that takes long. So very soon we are thinking to have our dean university. So we will think of it to getting into the national and international partnership once we will be deemed. We are very soon. We are. We already started the process of becoming the university. What you know in the West, uh, education is so expensive. You know, and there are some state schools where you can, where it costs less. You know, but still, it's hundreds of dollars a semester. And if it's not uh, twenty or thirty thousand dollars a semester, but what are the costs? I mean, the cross section of your students. Uh, what type of uh, cost do they have to, uh, they have to they, confront when they uh, uh, see the uh, average fees will be the for the PG programs will be somewhere around eighty thousand to one lakh twenty thousand per annum. Uh huh. It means in a dollar it will come approximately how much it will be. Uh, Two thousand dollars. Right. Two to two thousand five hundred dollars at max. And is that the undergraduate program, or is it? For the undergraduate program, program it will not be more than some three hundred dollars. Oh wow! Not not <laughs> more than three hundred dollars. Yeah. So is that does that mean there's a lot of support from the government? I know the government's no, very no, no. forward we thinking the, about education. No, we are the non-grantable institute. We don't get any grant. We are the self-financed institutes. Now in India, there is a model where are the institutes which is, which are funded by the government, and then there are institutes which are not funded. They are not they where the grants are not sanctioned. So we come under the category where we are in the self-financing institutes. So government have given us the permission, but government doesn't give us any grant. We have to run this entire. We are the self-financed institutes. So I say that my chairperson, she is a real woman entrepreneur. Because then you have to invest your own money, you have to build up your own capital, your own reserves, and you have to cater. So unless you have a passion for education, it seems like you know unheard of in the West <laughs> that a student could actually spend three hundred dollars and that the school doesn't doesn't get any grant money or somehow uh, private donations or something. No, no, I think that it it is uh, it uh, it is much talked about. There are institutes. Where they have the heavy fees, but these two the fees varies from one bracket of B school to another bracket of B school, and I think that the donations or all these things which you are keep listening, it's uh, not the reality to that extent. Is there anywhere else in India that has uh, uh, such a progressive school as Indira? I mean, uh, is this just a isolated event here in? In Maharashtra, or is it? Or is we it? have we have one branch now in Indore, which is in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh. Your branches, right? Yes, our branch is there in Madhya Pradesh, and in Maharashtra we have another center at Washi, that is near Bombay. I see. And very soon we will like to go even to some other states. <laughs> right, you have a model that works, so that uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you will. So this is. Really, really been interesting. Uh, uh, we don't really I know that much about it. it you know, the thing about uh, the why the education works the way I see it is because there's such a need. Because India is such a vibrating economy. I mean, it's the growth has been up to ten percent, has it yes. not? And now it's something hovering around six or seven percent. Seven, seven percent. It has 7%. come down because of this recession impact, but still, it is seven percent. Right, and so like uh, at least in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like seven percent. Even <laughs> half of that, I've never seen. You know, so it just seems like when I travel India, everyone's busy doing something. You know, whether they're the man on the street or a bicycle's loaded with bricks or has a steel on it and they're walking it uh, everybody's got some kind of a, a job. I think that we have a lot of hope and most probably therefore the whole world is looking towards the Indira as a, India as a ray of hope and they are expecting that very soon India will will become one day a cent, the power center that's what these predictions are there but I think that let us march towards that we have to go long way we have to really work hard for that let us keep the commitment towards our country and let us see that whether we can make some difference 
by contributing in the era, in the field of education that's what i think that we we are indebted with in my travels i saw so much infrastructure going in yeah. and they explained to me that uh, for instance the uh, commonwealth games are coming in 2010 Streets are going, going up, trains Delhi, are going up. You will find that it's airports all are all the, under construction. All the Yamuna, you will also find now the international games will be held in Delhi. The entire project of metro, which is going to be there in Nagpur, the Mihani Airport, which is going to be the landmark for the infrastructural development as far as the airport is concerned. In logistics, we are developing. In service sectors, we are developing. in medical tourism i think that medical tourism yes, right it is, it i'm is even a, interested in that yes. <laughs> you know i want to check it out you know yes and i think that these are the new areas where the uh, where india will make its own mark in the yeah. service sector in the medical tourism in the field of the education in infra and uh, unless we have the infra uh, really which will give a support to all this previously when used to take some 4 hour 5 hours journey from pune to bombay now with the express highway we reach early with 2 uh, hours 2 and 1/2 hours at max up to the uh, vt and i think that it has increased the connectivity it has increased the bond in between the two cities and so the business so the trade never before i have seen the i think that when uh, when whenever i travel now from bombay to pune i keep looking the all the trucks the loaded with with something all the trailers then i said that yes it means now the india is moving in that direction the, because the more trailer on the road it means the more right, business there's a lot there. of trucks that's the for sure trucks. so i think that that's the change even in my it means i uh, i think that now for last 32 years i am working and so when i was a student and when i am you know, teaching to my students or when i am rather training to my teachers i could see the difference when i have completed my graduation i i wasn't even there was no facility even of a xerox machine and today the whole world is all about the computerization it's all about this <laughs> so sometimes you know we might we might think oh india is a third world but really it's uh, surpassing uh, uh, the whole world you know It's, uh, it's really uh, oh, exciting. I think that the most important thing that the uh, uh, now I think that with the education, the India many times they used to have a discrimination in between the gender biases, which is no more there. Now you can vouch it as I am sitting in front of you and heading all thirteen institutes. <laughs> <laughs> and your chairperson also. No, I am not a chairperson. Yeah. No, but uh, your chairperson. Yes, my chairperson is also, is also a very young, dynamic lady. Yeah. and so there is no gender discrimination all the time you will find on the contrary you will find that more women empowerment is there you will find that the women they are getting into business they are into like the you must have heard about kiran mazumdar you must have heard about the indira noi you must have heard about the great politicians and i think that that's that's is very important which also gets reflected in indira which also gets reflected in indira to accept anybody to accept a lady as the ultimate boss i think that nobody could have thought of it 10 years back but now which is the reality and that's the uniqueness of the india that's the feature of was the was that smooth india. i mean did that just it's uh, very smooth it's very smooth the process i think to... that the education is in out the processes of having the equality equal footage see it's not about asking about the right it's showing that you are worth getting those rights and so believe in that that if you are on the right path then you have to get the right rightfully you have to ask for the right that's what we believe in and i think that the indian ladies i think that they cannot be compared it means somebody they try to have an attempt that what kind of how many tasks a lady must be working at and then they just started and they counted and they reached that there are 3200 tasks on a daily basis which any indian woman she undergoes right from in the morning we have the first thing which we have to do is that we have to have our gas on for boiling the milk and the late night when we go for the there is a process how we have to have a curd which we prepare at home so you have to again pour the uh, uh, the milk for setting it for the curd that's the last task most probably most of the indian women they are doing but in spite of that they are happy 
they are giving they are doing lot of productive work they have the family ties they are also professional and i think that this is this is very true and that will take the country that has already taken the country it means with that progress with that uh, speed well i hope you can help uh, <laughs> tell everybody this story because i mean i think this is proof that uh, uh, this no, way of living that, is just a way that uh, develops uh, to its highest uh, good i don't know it means uh, if if i will uh, something to deviate maybe from your pointer it may be, may not be a part of your story but see when i have completed i wasn't graduated when i got married i was about to complete my graduation when i got married yes thereafter i have completed all my education i have done my doctorate after getting married after 10 12 years after the gap of 12 years then thereafter immediately after getting married i completed my post graduation and then i decided that before my son become doctor i have to have my doctorate and that's how it the struggle was on but i was very focused knowing it well that one day i have to reach where and whether i can reach it or not and i think that yes if you have so decided you can do it and that's the freedom which we get in the indian context my husband being a very uh, uh, what i will say that he is into politics okay yes is a he is a member of parliament but in spite of all his thing he never said me anything about that you can't pursue it you can't do that you have to be like the because this is how it has been portrayed that the the ladies the indian ladies where they have the enough of the money the family is wealthy they are not supposed to do anything they are just resting with their husband's money which is true i think that yes on the contrary there is encouragement that you have to use your own brain and so we are doing our own careers and we have that freedom and i think that that freedom the way in which how you use the freedom and how you keep your professional and personal work life balance that's the story of the success it's like the freedom <laughs> of the nation starts in the home yes. it starts in the yes, heart it starts, it starts from home. yourself yes and you have to liberate yourself there there is no need for any women's liberation movement i think that that liberation starts from yourself you have to be liberated from n number of thoughts from, from your people. thoughts right yes from your thoughts you have to be free you have to you are answerable to yourself a moment when you coin this that i am answerable to myself i think that the things become easy in the life that's again the doctrine that's again i think the philosophical thought and i don't know like that i believe that this thought this process should be even talked to the students and so we have a tie up like the uh, the associations like tejgan we have a course which we deliver it to our students we get some of the spiritual trainers we ask our students to complete the art of living course because we know that it makes an imprint into their mindset and they will mold themselves and we are looking towards that kind of freedom that kind of application of knowledge we should come after getting degree is one aspect of it but using knowledge is the ultimate truth in the life that's just really why because i don't know <laughs> if that's in normal universities because you're building this foundation of practicality and this foundation that, of, of self knowledge basically so self knowledge application use the knowledge the way in which it can enlighten many others one thought of yours one doctrine in philosophy one doctrine in economics the one principle of unis mamat changed the life of so many ladies that's what the contribution of the education that's what i believe that, that that's that's where we have to take this indian students or the entire the stream of the education towards that and in their eyes working hard for that That's exactly what I dreamed of when I thought that I could that I would have the chance to come and talk to you because I was dreaming that you know it, that must be the foundation in India because that's the traditions and that's really so well respected you know and I think that that is that self liberation it gives you the uh, this that gives you the self introspection self liberation it's the it's the key to any education key to success key to right. success I truly thank you thank Richard. you truly thanks thank a lot you. okay <laughs> okay, you really enlightened us in the in the state of education and the state of the Indian society and the state of the Indian people and and how big is the Indian heart, you know. I hope that it was a good interaction. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Thank you.
So we're with Prachi today, and uh, she's the executive director of the Indira College. Uh, and they're not here. You've heard exactly the the practical wisdom and the natural intelligence of uh, how people are educated in in the fantastic growth of this college just means that it uh, the students are getting jobs and, uh, and the economy is thriving because of it. So this is really where you, we want to take you just to see what uh, other nations are about, especially in our trip in India, and uh, just uh, really get the feel of India from all sides, not just from a philo philosophical but from a very practical way. And just also for a, from a dream of, fu of the future which is actually actualized in this moment. I mean, this dream of the future is what's going on right now in India, and it's uh, assured for the future because what's happening today is certainly going to roll into the next moment and the next moment and the next moment. India is a fantastic country, and I just uh, heartily encourage all of you to come and take a look and, and visit, and uh, you'll just see that uh, the world is uh, in a positive state, you know. So, so many times we just look at the, at the bad parts, you know, and we're focused on what doesn't work. And somehow we have to shift our focus to what does work. And uh, I'm saying, you know, my experience here is, is uh, the Indian economy and the Indian uh, population, they work, it works. And uh, it's because they're holding a, a focus that, uh, that gradually builds uh, what's right and what, uh, what, what really, I don't know, I don't want to say save the world, but I mean, you know, uh, you could just say holding a focus on what doesn't work is kind of de uh, destruction. And uh, so... Richard Miller, uh, we're on the road, and we're in Pune, India, and so thanks again for coming, and uh, we'll see you next time. Fabulous. Really fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> really, really fabulous. <laughs> I don't know whether, how you appreciate it. Really, really fabulous. <laughs> Should I put it off? Yeah, you can put it I will just sing one stanza which tells about that you have to have a self-confidence. And so it's a story of a duck. All the times he thinks that he is the duck and then one day he realizes that no, he is not the duck. He is the really the, uh, what we call the, the Rajahus, swan. Uh, swan. He is the swan. That's the stanza. Okay. So I will just sing that last stanza. Eke dini parantu Vilas tyakale bhaya ved paar dhyase Vahryas ve punale Paniyat paah dana Suruniya kshanik tyase s tyakale राज